Hi everyone. So we will continue from where we <coughs> left in the previous lecture, which is the analysis of your first order system for different inputs. So we started with a simple first order system with a time constant tau, and we analyze the system for analyze the system for uh, three different inputs: the unit step, the unit impulse, the unit step, and the unit ramp functions. And we also derive the equations for the responses of all the three for all the three inputs. So for a unit impulse input, the output was actually a decaying exponential starting from 1 by tau at t equal to 0. And for a step function, the output is actually a growing exponential and it reaches the value of 1 asymptotically. But for a ramp function, to draw that we said that we first draw the input and a delayed version of the steady state value which is actually t minus tau into u of t. Then from the input the output will reach this value asymptotically. Okay. And we said that the steady state error is 0 for an impulse input and the step input the steady state error the, the output eventually catches up with the input and the steady state error was 0. But for a ramp input there was always a finite steady state error which was equal to the time constant tau. And also when you feed in a ramp input then the steady state the output looks like as though the ramp has been delayed by tau seconds. Okay. And uh, that delay is what causes the differ uh, difference between the input and the output with, val with a, uh, the difference being tau. Okay. This function is t minus tau into u of t. Okay. So, with this I will just start with what we want to dis in discuss in today's lecture. In today's lecture when you apply a first order system there are two points of interest which is at t equal to 0 and at t equal to infinity. So, this t equal to 0 is the initial response and t equal to 0 is your steady state response. So, in the previous lectures we found the value of v naught of 0, okay. but we did not find how does v naught of t behave at t equal to 0. Similarly, we found the value of v naught of infinity, but we did not try and see how does your function v naught of t approach the steady state value or you know how does the function behave in the steady state. So, now we will try to analyze for a first order system the initial response and the steady state response. So, we will start with a simple equation for the first order system tau dv naught by dt plus v naught equals v i. Now, if you look at the first order system, the first order system by its nature does not respond to sudden changes in the input. Meaning, the first order system has a resistance to change its output instantaneously or suddenly. Okay. So, for example, if I take a simple RC circuit for a, a simple first order system we will apply input at this point and the output will be across the capacitor. Now, we know that the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. Okay. The slope can change the slope the rate of change of voltage can be finite, but the voltage itself can be high as well, but the voltage itself has a very weak tendency to change you know it has literally no tendency to change. So, at t equal to 0 when you apply a sudden input whether it can be an impulse or a step or a ramp. Okay. At the step there is a sudden change in the voltage input voltage from 0 to 1 volt. For a ramp there is no change in voltage, but there is a change in slope there is a change in the slope of the voltage okay. input input voltage. So, because of that I said that in the previous lectures that the capacitor will suddenly act like a short circuit. So, your V naught will not change you know for that instant. Okay, V naught even if it changes the change is much smaller compared to the, the rate of change of V naught can be higher, but at that instant your V naught does not change. So, this equation the equation because your rate of change can be higher compared to the, the value itself the V naught value itself. Okay, if V naught changes suddenly then dV naught by dt will be much higher it will be an impulse. Okay. So, that is that is what I mean by it. So, if V naught remains in the same value still the function can try to increase gradually v naught can be trying to increase, 
but v naught of 0 is 0, but d v naught need not be 0. So, that is what uh, I am trying to say here that the output itself will not have a tendency to change. So, therefore, in that case I can ignore the term v naught compared to d v naught by d t and write it as v i. So, from this equation I can write your v naught as 1 by tau integral minus infinity to t v i of t d t. So, what is happening at t equal to 0 is that the first order system is behaving like a pure integrator. Okay. So, let us feed an impulse to the system. If I feed an impulse to a pure integrator, we know the output of an impulse, an integrator of this type should be 1 by tau. I mean, if I feed an impulse in place of v i of t, unit, unit impulse in place of v i of t, I should get a step function of value 1, 1 by tau. But what happens in an actual system is that your first value goes to 1 by tau, after that it decays down. Okay. So, if you look at this integ actual integrator and and, and the response of a first order system in this region when you look at it they both look the same at t equal to 0. So, therefore, a first order system behaves like an integrator at t equal to 0. Now, we will analyze for a step input 0 to 1. Okay. So, when you feed an input 0 to 1 we know that the output of a step uh, for output of a first order system to a step input is 1 minus e power minus t upon tau into u of t. Now, for small values of t, this value can be approximated as e power minus x, it can be approximated as 1 minus x. So, this function reduces to t by tau into u of t. That is your function at t equal to 0. So, now if you actually use the definition v naught of t at t equal to 0, uh, what we described a few moments ago, v i of t into d t, if v i of t is a step function, if I feed it to this integrator, then ideally the output should, the output of this is 1 by t into t into u of t for an integrator and that exactly matches here. So, for small values of t. So, ideally if I feed a step input, the output of an integrator should increase linearly like this, but what happens in a first order system is at t equal to 0 it follows the integrator, but after that the value reduces and it retains a finite value. Okay. So, that is once we go to frequency domain we can explain this using uh, using different ideas, but right now this should suffice. So, at t equal to 0 we just showed here we just took a normal expression for a step response and showed that it approaches the integral of a step function at t equal to 0. Similarly, uh, if I feed a ramp input to an integrator, I should get t square by 2 tau into u of t at uh, I mean for all time. This is the for an I mean output of an integrator if you pass input as a ramp. So, we, are, we know the ramp response is t into u of t. We will try to obtain this result from the ramp response which we are which we have already derived. So, now I will actually use e power minus x is approximately equal to 1 minus x plus x square by 2 factorial. Okay. Using that you can actually show this result t into u of t minus tau. Now, this term when I substitute 1 minus e power x will actually be equal to tau minus tau square by 2 oh sorry I am sorry. So, x is actually uh, x is actually t by tau. So, you will actually get t by tau minus t square by tau square into 2 into u of t. So, the first term when you take t inside the bra brackets, the first term and this would get cancelled, you will be left with t square by 2 tau into u of t. So, you get the same result when you integrate a, a ramp function okay, at t equal to 0. So, therefore, at t equal to 0, a first order system will behave like an integrator. It will try to integrate the input applied. Okay. After that it does not behave like that, okay. but only at t equal to 0 when there is a sudden change in the input system behaves like an integrator. Now, let us analyze the steady state output. So, before we go for the steady state, I will rewrite this expression, the first order system expression to understand what exactly this system is trying to do tau d v naught by d t plus v naught equals v i. 
So I'll write it as tau dv0 by dt as vi minus v0 and uh, so your v0 is actually 1 by tau integral vi minus v0 dt minus infinity to t. So your input your output is actually an integrated version of an error between the input and output. So if I try to draw a control system model for this your input is fed to the system and I am going to subtract the output from it and feed it to an integrator 1 by tau integral and this output of this integrator is your output v0 which is again fed back. So this is like a first order system ok. This is like a first order system. A first order system I have drawn a control model for it. Now if, if you think it like a servo loop your output always tries to match the input here right. The, eventually the goal is to make the error as low as possible. So your output always tries to the feedback beta is 1 here it always tries to catch up with the input. So in the steady state in the steady state so I will write v i minus v naught as tau d v naught by dt. In the steady state as I said your output actually tries to match up with the input. So this can be approximated to tau d v i by dt ok it is trying to match the input. So using this we can very very easily show that if I apply an impulse function d v i by d t at t equal to infinity is 0 because there is no signal itself so it is 0. So your v i will be equal to v naught in the steady state. So if your input is unchanging in the steady state if your input is constant in the steady state then both the input and output will be equal for a first order system ok. So the same should be true for a step input your output is not changing unchanging for a large value of t when I say steady state your t is much much greater than the time constant of the system that is what is the steady state ok. You should be far away from the time constant in time. Even for a step input your v i will be equal to v naught in the steady state because your v i itself is unchanging. But for a ramp input when you apply a ramp input on the other hand ok. So we will try to use this equation and see what happens in a ramp input your v i minus v naught it for a unit ramp d v i by d t is 1 will be equal to tau which means the steady state is not 0 but rather it is a finite there is a finite value to it ok. So now if I apply a parabolic input meaning an input of the form t square by 2 into u of t in that case your error which is actually v i minus v naught will be tau t into u of t. So I just up substituted this function in this equation I differentiated it. So I get tau t into u of t. So now the error actually increases linearly ok. So the which means the error is diverging. So when you actually measure the difference between the input and the output so if I, if I apply a ramp input a parabolic input and monitor the output the output and the input the error between the two will actually grow linearly. For a ramp input the error was always constant you know the error was always tau but for a parabolic input the error is growing diverge, uh, is diverging indefinitely. So because of that you do not feed normally you do not feed inputs more than a ramp input to a first order system. Even ramp if you can tolerate for very small time constants the error will be smaller but still you do not you, you actually stop with step inputs itself because to get 0 steady state error you cannot feed an input more than the step I mean an, uh, an input increasing uh, at a rate more than the step input in the steady state ok. So which actually boils down to any input which is a, which has a finite slope. If you apply any input with a finite slope your first order system will not be able to track that it will always have an error it will be it will be able to track it but without it cannot track it with a zero steady state error. So that is all I am uh, trying to say here. So the important point to see here is that a first order system the steady state error between the input and the output is actually proportional to the slope of the input in the steady state the slope not everywhere only at the steady state this is the steady state slope. So with this I think I, I just I will just wind up the discussion of first order systems. So 
you need to know how the first order system behaves when an input is suddenly applied versus at the end when the input is you know in the steady state okay so in, in the when the input is applied in the beginning or when uh, at t equal to 0 when there is a sudden change your integrator or your first order system behaves like an integrator so I, here i have assumed at t equal to 0 i said is the initial condition uh, but it can be anywhere it can be the in, at t equal to 10 you can apply the input at t equal to 10 your output will behave like an integrator at t equal to 10 okay and this is called time invariance it depends where your input is actually applied you know when there is a sudden change in the input your output will behave like an integrator okay at that time instead of where you applied your input and similarly after you applied and let the system settle for a long time the error between the input and the output will depend upon the rate of change of the input so uh, those are the two takeaway points from today's lecture so in the next class i'll solve problems on uh, first order circuits i'll stop here